Okay, good morning. Nine o'clock, first year, first lecture for you. And for after a long time, this is for me also a first time face to face. So welcome, welcome to Manchester. I hope you have got a great experience throughout your next three or four years in terms of learning, which will prepare you for the future career in engineering or in elsewhere, in another subject area. So this subject of structures is important for both civil and aerospace engineers. It not, even if you don't want to be a structural engineer in the end as a career choice, but the principles that you will be learning in this unit will be useful in so many other units and also you will develop other transferable skills in this unit which will, be, which will prepare you for your future endeavor, whatever you plan to do in the future. So if you have got some idea about mechanics from your A level, structure says little extension of mechanics, but in essence, similar type of subject. So the focus is on concepts. So the concepts are the key for this unit. So if you do not understand something, please make sure that you spend rest of the time understanding the concept. If failed, then ask me, and there are several other resources which I will point towards you, because these are the type of subjects where solving problems and solving lots of problems may not help if you have got conceptual understanding deficiency. But if you do get the concept, if you can grasp the concept, then no matter what the problems are, you will be able to make a stab at it, make, make a go at it. Because the real world problems would be solved through the methods that you will be learning in this unit. So the first thing would be, how do you transfer a real world problem to a problem that can be solved? For example, if you are given a task of coming up with an initial sizing of an aircraft, where do you start, for example? You don't want to go and design and analyze each and every bit of connections and, and stiffeners, for example, at the start. So where do you start? So that's where these concepts will come in. And then you will make a tractable problem and which you'll solve. Okay, I'll, of course my job is here to take you through the step by step of this subject so that by the end of it, you are confident about any problems related to structural aspects to have a go, okay? But you do have to engage with the process. If you do not understand something, there are enough resources elsewhere, and, and I am here not physically, but through emails and, and, the, and the electronic medium like discussion board, etc., will be able to help you through get over that. Can you hear me at the back? Those of you came later? Okay, so I don't need to use the microphone then. Yeah, okay. And most of the lectures, it will be, I'll try to get your engagement as well. So I'll try to be uh, uh, asking lots of questions. So do participate in those. So if there is anything that you want me to do again, I'm very happy to do that as well. So, Let's talk a little bit about myself first. It is very difficult to get where you are from, although that would have been ideal, but with 285, probably we need two lectures to go through that. So I'm leaving that for another day, but make sure that you know each other, at least person next to you, and, and try to, because that's the whole point of having this university experience, which some of our current second year missed out last year, for example. So in terms of myself, so I did 
uh, masters in uh, and bachelors and masters in civil and structural engineering from a place called Kanpur in India and Indian Institute of Technology. And then I came to do a PhD in again structures related subject, structural mechanics. I'll probably tell you a little bit about my PhD research towards the end if you have got time. So after Cambridge I came to this university as a lecturer and that was way back. And that, that time this was so called EUMIST, University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology, which later became this current university of Manchester. So currently I am a reader in bioengineering and structural mechanics. So those of you who are not familiar with the term reader, it's, yeah, it means that I have just started to read, and so it's not in that sense, but it's something like associate professor rank from other places, for example. So what we'll be studying, course outline. So these are basic topics. So first of all, we'll learn about equilibrium. So when things stay where they are, how do we analyze that? How do we use that information to analyze structures, for example? So the idea of equilibrium we'll explore through various problems first. So things called free body diagram. So we will, we will explore those as well. Then we'll look at how does a force goes through a member in the axial directions or in along the directions of its length, for example. That will take on to us to trusses, for example, how the trusses are, are analyzed and how the truss structures are exploited in various cases. So starting from a biplane aircraft to civil engineering bridges, for example. Then we look at bending something called bending moment shear force diagram. These won't make sense to you unless you have done a similar things before. But don't worry, we'll, we'll go through that step by step. Then we'll quickly go through material properties that is required for this structural analysis. We'll also calculate elongations, deflections of a structure and something called second moment of area. In terms of assessment, you will have 80% through online quizzes and examinations. And then a group coursework for 20%. So maybe at this point, if I pause and show that bit to you. So, so this is broadly the timetable that we will be go through. So the first lecture, which is on Monday morning, first lecture of the week is in this room, 9 to 10. And the second lecture of the week is in engineering building. Are you familiar with engineering building, the big black one? So their lecture theater A, I know the time is not very good, it's 5 to 6. That's because of the constraint on the big rooms. And also uh, this lecture, probably the, given the exposure to the first year, to the new lecture theater in the engineering building. And then from week three onwards, we'll have tutorials. And that would be every alternate week, week three, five, seven, nine, eleven, etc. Now that lecture should be taken by me, but tutorials would be myself and there would be graduate teaching assistants who will come around and help you with any problems that you may have. So these are the topics that I just mentioned we'll try to cover over 12 weeks. And in terms of the assessment, there will be four online quizzes and the issue week and submit week are given in your coursework timetable. Have you got a coursework timetable? No? Okay, so I'll, I'll try to find that out. So that will be for all your units this semester your year tutor will give you a coursework timetable. That, okay, this subject, this week, you will have a coursework. And that requires to be submitted in this week. And that would have that much percentage or weightage 
towards your final exam for example or final unit assessment so so as you could see about 60% is would be assessed during the term so by the time you go home for winter break you will have done 60% of the assessment when you come back in january you will have the rest 40% of the whole syllabus the assessment that will take place now these four quizzes that we will be doing during the term that will cover the whole syllabus again so it will be given so from week 4 6 8 and 11 and then you submit the following week these are meant to be assisting you with your understanding so marks are important of course that is going into the final assessment but you take these online quizzes to find out gaps in your knowledge so there would be small quizzes maybe you spend you'll need i design it for example 20 to 30 minutes maximum you'll take to do those online quizzes but you may take more so maybe you'll take an hour or so but that is primarily to assess if there is any conceptual deficiency on your understanding if there is then of course they will be given a feedback onto those quizzes then go through those topics and this first year this subject as i say was, is very important in terms of the concept so don't leave anything okay i don't understand that it may not come in the exams oh true everything will come in the exam and i mean everything concept wise what i covered here would come into the exam and nothing is, is for example that you could leave it that this is not going to come so everything what we deliver here will be assessed in one form or another okay so so do that and then there is one piece of coursework which you have to do in group so we'll discuss that when the time comes in week five or about so that uh, you, you have got an idea. I'll give you what sort of group project that you'll be doing. So that's about about this in a way. So that is how the courses will be laid out and delivered and assessed. Any questions at this stage about the content? Yeah, go on. I hope so. Well, if not, I have got some recording similar things from uh, previous um, blended learning things. So I'll upload those. So I'm pretty sure, fingers crossed, that is captured through the po podcast system. So sometimes if it doesn't work, then I'll try to get something to that. Effect. So yes, uh, I'll, I'll go through that thing in a moment in the, in the Blackboard. So course materials are available in Blackboard. So let me quickly show you where that is. So if you log into Blackboard, then you'll come into this page. Have you had a go at that? Did you manage to log in to this page? Yeah, good. Okay, so that's a, okay. This is not by design. It looks like I have got only one search, so definitely I have got other search. So. So this uh, looks like exactly the same. So no, not that by design. So just it happens. Okay. So not wearing the same shirt and okay, fine. So there would be three folders primarily. One is learning, one is revision, and one is assessment. Now I thought about it, and I thought probably this is the probably the much more efficient way for you to. Uh, to uh, go through the material and revise. Now, if I come out of this exit preview, so, so this is what you see in a way. So if you go into the learning, what my idea is, I'll put their materials, what we cover during the lecture or tutorials on a weekly basis. So for example, week one, I plan to go through these things. So some of it would be already populated. So if there is a slide that I'm going to show, so mostly 
that will be there beforehand. So if you have got spare time, you can go through that. Or if there is any concept video, I think which you may benefit by looking at it beforehand, they will be uploaded there beforehand. And sometimes, or not sometimes, most of the times, I'll scribble something, some examples over here using the visualizer. So what I normally do is, if that is something of a calculations and I have done on piece of paper, I scan it and put it into Blackboard so that you have got in the set of a document. Failing that, of course, there is a backup through, as you said, in the podcast system. So whatever I am speaking here, whatever is this screen shows, that would be captured into the podcast. So I will avoid writing on these because they are not captured. So I'll try to use this visualizer which would be captured through the podcast. So just to make sure those who could not be here, they could use that. Having said that, do attend the lectures. There is no substitute of attending lectures. So many podcasts over the years, but coming here has got all sorts of other benefits too. Podcasts should be the sort of your backup system. If you didn't quite get what I was talking about some concept, you can go through that. That should be your backup if you need in that way not that as your means to get through this unit. So do come to the lectures. And you know what? If you are here, that gives the lecturers also a sort of a connection and that lectures becomes better in that way through that engagement. So I could give this lecture to an empty room, but I can assure you that will not be the same as when you are there. Okay? So that has got indirect benefit as well for you to attend on your own benefit. So that is what would be in this learning folder. So everything that we do in these lectures and tutorials would be posted onto this learning folder week by week. Then there is something called a revision folder. Now of course you cannot see all of it now, but wh what you'll see, the lecture notes. So the lecture notes could be something like, so I feel this is what you need to study now. So these are sort of background notes that we, it will be covered through other means, through the slides, through examples, etc. Et so, so those lecture notes, and then there will be tutorial sheets and the solution. Now I won't reveal all of it at one go. So if I go into what you will see, you will see only this, lecture notes and background reading, for example. You will not see the tutorial solutions, yeah, tutorial questions. I'll release those as and when you are up at that stage. And finally, there would be this assessment. Now the assessment, again, uh, it will be populated as and when the coursework or piece of assessment is due. And finally, as you asked, lecture podcast should be available through that link. And normally they arrange it according to the dates and the course unit number. Is there any questions about the running of the course or any comments? No? You are okay? Okay. If you if you not sure then do let me know. What I'm going to do as well, I'm going to start a discussion board and I'll let you know how. You, so discussion board, you can participate. There will be two types of thread in the discussion board. One would be finding the materials. Well, I cannot find out this bit of the lecture notes. Or do you have solution for this? So sort of an inquiry based on the information that you want to access. Another one is genuine questions about the subjects. So I expect everybody to participate in this. So for example, if somebody, one of your friend is asking about, do you know where this piece of information is? Then do participate into that discussion. 
And if there is also a question somebody asks, I didn't quite get how the equilibrium of that particular object was analyzed on that lecture. Now, of course, uh, I will come in from time to time, but please feel free to help each other. And learning by each other through that discussion board is often a useful tool for to clarify your own understanding of the problem as well. Okay? So there would be a discussion board coming in here, and, and the threads, you can, you'll have the, you'll have the authority to create a thread, reply to a thread, etc. Okay, so that's about Blackboard. And assessment will be primarily online. So this is not finalized yet, but mostly, most likely your final examination will also be online. But that I'll confirm later. So whole courses would be assessed through online. Okay. So, uh, so that, that's the idea. Okay. Another piece of support you may get is from the past scheme, PR assisted study schemes. So you'll get information about this so that, so that the earlier year students will help you into not essentially you shouldn't get to them with the problem of I don't understand this piece of coursework. Can you help me with that? It's more like they can help you with where can I find information related to this topic, for example, or who can help me on this topic. So that is much more useful. They are not there, although they can and they do sometimes help you with a specific query to a problem but on how to solve it. But mostly they are there in the sort of information point and guide you through how to go through this course unit, for example. Okay, so make use of that. Okay, so that's one thing. So if I go back to my picture notes in here. So, as I said, so if you have got something under a load, then things get compressed or things get extended or things could bend, or things could sear off, for example. So we will analyze all of this basic action of the forces on an object. And the object could be anything. Object could be a chair, table, big room, aircraft, or the visualizer stand. It could be anything. So you should be confident to apply these techniques that you will be learning here on any object. And it doesn't mean that the civil engineers will only think about it's a beam or it's a column that I'm going to analyze. What is a column? So is that what is at, at, at top of this room? Are these beams, flat slabs, what, truss? How do you analyze those, et cetera? So who is involved? As I said, these are, we have gone through those. There will be GTAs who will help you with your tutorials and I will be delivering the lectures. And I have gone through that, okay. So what is a structure? Now there is not much of a definition there, but maybe, maybe you, could, you could define a structure as a body or an assembly of, a bo of bodies in space to form a system capable of supporting load. So it's, 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 and, and the, then the, by that way, by carrying that load, they will deform. So one of the aspects would be how to analyze that deformations for it. So this is a structure, possibly, you'll say, and it looks like very much like an assembly of a beam and column, although you don't know what purpose they made, but definitely it's a structure because it's system of object which is carrying a load or set of loads, for example. And the loads are the dead weights, loads from wind, loads from ground movement, for example, load from temperature variations, loads from the snow deposited on the top of the, top of the beams. So all kinds of loading, for example, onto these structures and they are 
carrying those loads. International Space Station, for example, of course, they have to, uh, to be an integral part and carrying the loads which is coming from, say, thermal expansion, for example, or constrained thermal expansion, and other types of load from the movement or the rotations of the space stations. Or maybe a, even a very mundane object like a spider wave. Now again, that may not be that much beneficial to us human, but it is nevertheless a structure which is serving a purpose of carrying the load and and, and also carrying high impact forces, for example, and serving an object to its creator, the spider in this case. And it's quite fascinating. I had one undergraduate student looked at these spider waves and she could find the patterns in those and how, although the spiders are themselves structural engineers or not, we don't know, we hope probably not, but the sense of structures is, is inherent there. So that way they weave these waves is very much structurally efficient system. So depending on the space, they, they design their waves. So if it is in a corner of a room, a different type of waves as in the sort of a middle of a room, for example. And again, one could analyze that from a structural point of view. Now, of course, some other wind, uh, solar um, paneled aircraft, again, different type of um, structures there. The stent, for example, in this case, titanium alloy made stent in, 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 that is used in the coronary artery uh, cases, for example. Maybe our human body, if you think about it, is nothing but a structural system and which is supporting all the important organs and also carrying the loads that we are subjected to every day, carrying the biggest organ in the human body, the skin, for example, and, and all these are probably a form of structure, you could say. And some other common form, like the Petronius Tower in Malaysia. So what is this subject of structures that we'll be studying? Now this theory for it is one of the oldest branch in engineering. It comes from the name, a Latin word called steward. It means anything built. So that could be a rope bridge in a mountainous region. It could be a grand cathedral, for example, and even could be some houses and the pavement, for example, a cobbled pavement, or a boat. A boat is also a structure which has to carry the load in certain ways. So the examples are varied. So before Renaissance, these structures were built without any so-called theory in the modern context, but they had code of practice. And also some medieval rule book exists for this, for example, to design a cathedral. And they, uh, they emphasize on practice is nothing without theory in that sense. And builder's manual book or existence of it is mentioned from about 600 BC. Now in the modern context, it's the subject is fairly developed and it is much more in the architectural and the aesthetic sense. So in this case, the designer or the architects want you to go through those under this pass and this huge block of rock at the top doesn't make any practical purpose except confidence in the structural analysis as a subject and the design as a subject. So taking aesthetic appeal to the extreme with high confidence in their own analysis and design going under this through that arch. So 
what did you do for example so imagine you have done this course and you are given a task first task is you have to design a crossing over a river which is infested with alligators okay so so your job is to design that and then first of all you will say okay who is going to cross that piece of stream or the river so you need to assess the load whether it is you yourself you and your friends or you yourself and and some farm manual for example or whether there is any other vehicles that would pass through so you need to assess the load and the load is not the what you call imposed load but the load from the other conditions like the snow wind waves all form of loads that you need to assign so you have to design that that crossings so first thing you need to when you have design you have to ask is it strong enough so is it going to break if myself and my friend two of us on that bridge is it going to collapse so if it is then we take appropriate action say one person at a time please and not more than that much of weight so you need to have those restrictions in place but main thing is you need to ask this question is it strong enough is it going to break for example under under the load that i am uh, assuming it will have to carry now if it breaks then that prospect is not very good second is it may not break but it may deflect too much and then it's a fist for the alligator in that sense so it deflected so much that the water came up and 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 then the bridge or or this crossing is no longer serving its purpose so serving the purpose is the main thing that you need to you need to have in your mind so in this case the the bridge uh, the crossing didn't break it is strong but it deflected too much so that it it doesn't serve its purpose and thirdly you need to think about will it last long enough maybe one winter or two winter if it is made up of objects that would decay fairly rapidly some materials do then how long it is going to last do you need to change every season for example or or every five years so these are the durability questions that you need to ask so these are the broadly three things that you will be asking whether they are strong whether they are deflect too much or elongate too much and thirdly are they durable or not so that will apply for any form of structures that will be designing so generally you will be asking this question effect of the load whether that is less than the resistance or not so in the first few weeks we'll consider the first part of this what is the effect of the load so if there is a stand there if i put in some amount of load on top of it what is the effect of that load onto this visualizer panel for example so we'll be considering the first bit of the actions in the first few weeks and then we'll move to the second half or second uh, few weeks on to on to the resistance bit that how much is the resistance of an object so if i find out the resistance of this stand if i put a weight here is 2 newton for example then we know that i should not put any load more than 2 newton at least so so that so that relationship is important that the effect of the load has to be less than the resistance so deflections in the same way will do so if the desk that you are sitting in front have got very high deflection then that will not serve its purpose for so your pen or pencil will roll in that way so there are three main criteria again as i said strength stiffness and stability so these three are related to three broad questions with that river crossings that i spoke earlier and good thing is that as this is a very mature subject in terms of the theoretical part that is much more streamlined 
So only, if you believe it or not, the whole subject of structures can be solved with three sets of equations. Equation of statics, which you have known from your A-level, if you have done mechanics, so things like equilibrium. Summation of forces in certain direction is zero. Summation of moments about a point is zero. So those are equation of statics. And that's it. That's the first set of equation. Second is geometrical equation. How things connect to each other. So if you are designing that river crossing, so it has to be support on the banks, two opposite banks, and then how, they are cutting, how the load goes from the middle of the crossings to the banks on the ground, for example. Or how does the load of this roof ultimately goes to the ground? So these are sort of a geometrical equations that you need to consider. And finally, what materials that you will be using and how much they will deform into the uh, certain, under certain load. So these are the three sets of considerations we'll be looking at. I'm going to show you a small video of, from Institution of Structural Engineers, and then that will give you some idea about what structural engineering is. Which variety of buildings and structures we see all around us? Why do we just assume that houses will stay up and bridges won't fall down? Have you ever stopped to wonder at the huge variety of buildings and structures we see all around us? Why do we just assume that houses will stay up and bridges won't fall down? The answer can be found in the work of the structural engineer. As highly trained professionals, they work with architects and surveyors to ensure that whatever they are building can sustain the loads and stresses it will have to bear. As well as improving the places where we live, they are the guardians of safe construction too. The challenges they face are diverse and require both creativity and problem-solving skills. That's why structural engineers are both designers and problem-solvers too. There are specialists who account for extreme conditions such as heavy snow or coastal storms. There are seismic structural engineers who meet the challenges of construction within earthquake zones. There are those who focus on disaster relief helping to rebuild shattered communities and restore normal life. There are engineers who specialize in renovating old buildings for continued use, whilst preserving heritage and meeting modern standards. And then there are forensic experts who investigate the reasons why some structures fail. Today, structural engineers must also face the issues of climate change, which will make structures need to endure more challenging environments over time. Sustainability is an increasingly important goal. New regulations require materials and construction techniques to create green buildings that are still strong and secure. Structural engineers are responsible for some of the most innovative concepts, projects and designs. They are developing new technologies and techniques to create extraordinary structures that are quite literally changing the world. But the work of the structural engineer isn't just focused on groundbreaking schemes. They are also making a difference to people's lives. Buying or improving your home can be a major expense, but you could save money by consulting a qualified engineer. They identify problems early on, provide cost-effective solutions, and ensure that all regulations are properly met. They can also check that a property is structurally safe and secure with Institution of Structural Engineers upholds and supports the highest standards of the profession as a whole. Our members have to pass some of the most stringent exams that exist. The institution's post-nominal qualifications are an internationally recognized okay, guarantee so, of professional... Okay, so they are going into a bit more details about, about you being a member of this Institute of Structural Engineers, which I urge you to be because it is free, first of all and they give you, uh, and, and you will be making your way through the chartered, say, chartered engineers, chartered structural engineer if you want to be this way. So, be, and, and the information will be given you through other means, through the year tutor as well. So, just fill in the form and then just be a member of institution of structural engineers. You could be a member of various professional group, uh, um, institution, so there are Royal Aeronautical Society for Aerospace Engineers as well. For Civil Engineers, there is also Institute of Civil Engineers. 
but you can also be Institute of Structural Engineers membership as well. You can take that. Okay, so going back to, uh, so I'll, I'll probably take next few minutes uh, to talk about a little bit of my research interest. So I'm not going into too much details into any of this. So I'll give you a flavor of what are the areas that I personally interested in. So my colleagues in the department in the structural fit are, are engaged in research in various other areas. But my interest is primarily in those four areas. So basic structural engineering, as you have said, composites, so primarily carbon fiber composite, seismic engineering, and bioengineering. I'll try to give you a very quick flavor on what I said. I said I'll talk to you about this project, which comes from my PhD. Something called buckling of thin cylindrical cell. So if you take a can of Coke, for example, or, or a metal can, and if you stamp on it, then it crosses or it buckles in technical terms. So, so you can imagine these are very thin walled <laughs> structures in the form of cylinders, and you are applying a load from the top, which is so-called compressive load. So it tries to compress the cylinder. Now there is a theory for it that how much this load would be. So it says that the stress that you can maximum give is related to the Young's modulus, which you probably remember from your LFL physics, and then something called Poisson's ratio. And then the thickness of this cylinder and the radius of the cylinder's ratio. So if you can concentrate on this bit, that the stress should be proportional to thickness over radius. So that means if you have got a thinner cylinder, it takes less stress, or it's less strong in that sense, under compressive loading. Similarly, if you have got a bigger radius, then it will take also also uh, less stress in that sense, uh, higher stress. Because radius means less stress, yes. So that was the theory which was developed probably about 150 years back, and its origin is even earlier than that. And that was the theory people have been using to assess the strength and the design of the cylinder. The shock came in around 1930s when between the wars, lots of uh, the, uh, the industry on the aircraft industry was picking up. And if you, if you imagine an aircraft fuselage, that is as a first approximation, it's a big cylinder. Means may not be a prismatic shape, but a cylindrical shape, nevertheless. So they did the testing, primarily NASA, they did the testing on those big cylinders, which is the fuselage of the aircraft. And what they found is that this theory is highly deficient. So they started to use different geometry, different geometry, I mean the different combinations of the thickness and radius. And when they plotted those as, as a function of radius to thickness, which is inverse of that. This is thickness over radius. And then experimental load that this structure would carry divided by this theoretical load that formula said it would carry. So if they are equal, then that should be one. But they found experimental load was much lower than what theory would predict. And not only that, they had notional a similar cell, for example, you buy 12 can of Cokes, for example, and you test them one after another, they will fail different load. So there was scatter in those data. So first is poor prediction of the theory. Second was the scatter. Even with the nominally similar specimens, you will get different load carrying capacity. And thirdly, often it failed with a catastrophic failure. 
so they needed to do something about it so that was the background of this problem which i took up on in my phd and i did some uh, experiments again without the experiments you never get to the bottom of the things so we did some something called self weight buckling so i made some rubber cylinders very tall and let them stand on it under own weight of course if it is too tall it wouldn't so with a pair of scissors i cut the length again tries to stand on its own weight it wouldn't until it just stood so that cutting them by almost millimeter by millimeter until they stood on its own weight then i used that as a self weight uh, load against buckling for those cylinders so when i plotted those results i saw this that this is the theory plotted with some parameter so the theory that i showed before would come with this pink line whereas my experimental data was coming with a different sort of a line with a different slope so my slope was not proportional to t over r but t over r to the power 1.5 and i found almost no scatter compared to the other previous experiment then with a sort of a uh, thinking about it for long time and then i had a sort of a you know so what about all those experiments people have done primarily nasa and similar over the years so i took on all those data and plotted in this way the way that i i did it and then i saw that all those data previously people have done experiment indeed had an average slope of about 1.5 so experiments all along have been pointing to a different prediction although the theory the way it was built up was pointing to a different curve so where is the mismatch now in this case you always say okay experimental is the king of course it is so the job is then the theory to explain why experimental data behave in this way now of course t over r to the proportionality if people use it they use it with a sort of knock down factor so they reduce that one but what i was proposing here that you change that proportional to t over r to t over r to the power 1.5 then you have got a much better much better sort of empirical evidence so it's not a theoretical evidence it's an empirical evidence it based on the experiments huge amount of experiments people have done over the years so then we started to develop the theoretical background and everything else so i would not bore with you so if you are interested you can read papers various papers on on the subject and in particular it varies with t to the power 2.5 i also did uh, recently some experiment with uh, jointed plane concrete pavement so if you if you think about an aircraft runway they are made up of concrete slabs the runway itself and they are not made as a single concrete slab they are made in in of certain sizes why because of to accommodate the thermal expansion contraction shrinkage all sorts of things so what they do is between the two pavements they are connected by what is called dowel bar so the dowel bar so there is a gap between so you can imagine the one side is one pavement and this is the right pavement they are connected by there is a hole in the inside there at a certain depth and a bar goes through two of those and the bar accommodates any movement of the slabs in, in from thermal or uh, expansion or contraction so imagine the aircraft wheel is here so the load is not just on this slab but through this dowel bar it will go into other one otherwise you can imagine if the load is there this will go into the deep into the ground and then there is a bump because the other one is not loaded so the whole things to appear uniform these dowel bars are there now traditionally this has been made using steel now still one problem is because of use of salt on the runway uh, in the winter etc they do corrode so that way it is it is a it is a problem anyway time is up 
So there is a video for um, this research overview in, web, in Blackboard. So if you are interested, you can go through that. It is, I have uploaded a video for this part. I thought I will not be able to under, uh, cover this. But what I am going to uh, bring your attention to finally one problem over here. So go through this problem. Okay, so as you are moving out, so think about this problem. So there are one, two, three-legged stool and four-legged stool. A person with 60 kilogram weight sits in the middle. How much load each leg must carry? So I'll pick up from here on Thursday. So think about this problem for the time being. Okay, it, it's it's in there. In, in blackboard as well. Can you quickly tell me that if, if the, there is three-legged stool, 60 kg weight in the middle, how much each leg should carry? Each leg should carry around 20 kilograms of Great, thank you. Anybody disagrees? You do, okay? So three-legged will be always with the touching on the ground. But what you said is very important. That will come to the four-legged one. <coughs> because four-legged one, how much each, each one would carry? Nominally 15 kg, right? But what happens if one of the leg is not touching the ground? Go on. It will be 30, isn't it? Why? So the two corners won't. That, that's a very good point. So what he is uh, saying is absolutely right, that if you have got a four-legged stool, so if one doesn't carry any load, then the other one opposite will not. Anyway, time is up. You may have got other lectures, so I'll not hold you up. So we'll discuss this on Thursday and few other problems. And I'll give you uh, things to read for Thursday as well. Okay? So do that, please. Thank you. Sorry? I'm sorry, I'm late. That's okay. That's okay, that's fine, that's fine. That's fine if first day it happens, that's okay. Yeah. Everything is available through podcast and everything else, so. Hi. Oh, hi, Alistair. Not bad, how are you? With the mask, it's very, very difficult to recognize. So let me get. Sorry, I took your couple of minutes. How do you log off? Yeah. How do you log off? <laughs> okay. So probably a switch off from there. No source, okay. I think it's, uh, it just takes a while to log out. Yeah, so now... I, w I won't use that, so I'll use uh, my laptop. But I need to... Um, so, with the attendance, are we actually... Because we don't ask... No, I, I'm not going to take the attendance as such. What you have to do is, you have to do the self-register with this unit, that you have been here. So there is no marks or anything associated with that attendance, as I said in the beginning. It's just for us to monitor well-being issues. So if you are absent for one week, then so that your tutor can follow up. Is there anything happening with you, for example? So I have to check in. Yeah, you have to check in. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you.